Less than a decade ago, the picture of health for the world's poor was bleak. A picture made bleaker by three epidemics sweeping across the globe. HIV AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, cruelly and often in concert, were devastating families, killing millions and shattering hope. Mothers could not care for their children and sick workers caused businesses to fail. The most vulnerable families and communities were coming apart. Entire nations were being brought to their knees. Rwanda, a nation already ravaged by civil war and genocide in the 1990s that left behind hundreds of thousands of orphans. By 2002, HIV, AIDS, TB and malaria had replaced war and brutality as the greatest threats to the nation. A mere handful of doctors tried to protect seven and a half million Rwandans from disease. They were losing. Indonesia, the world's fourth largest nation, HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria were brutalizing society's poorest and most vulnerable. Hundreds of thousands of women and children bore the brunt of the suffering. Ethiopia, a nation reeling under the onslaught of the three diseases, its healthcare system struggling to meet the challenge. The deadliest form of TB, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, spread unchecked. Fear and ignorance cast thousands of people living with HIV from their villages. Children were orphaned in droves. These countries typify the scope of the problem that enveloped entire continents. The world community came together to address these crises across the globe. It was apparent that money alone would not be the answer. The method for confronting the dismal health of the world's poor had to be reframed. So Kofi Annan, then UN Secretary General, called on all world leaders to defend health as a human right with a bold historic experiment. The Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. The fund empowers countries to develop and manage their own plans to tackle these epidemics. So that means it's really what ex expressing our need, according our policy, our strategy. Diverse partnerships bring all stakeholders into the fight. Local resources are marshaled to increase access to health care in every community. Between 2002 and 2010, the Global Fund has committed over $19 billion in 144 countries. And now, new pictures of health are emerging in one community after another all around the world. Thanks to the Global Fund, 2.8 million people living with HIV have received antiretroviral drugs, known as ARVs. 2.1 million of them in Africa. And these people have become productive, have started to contribute to the community. And you can imagine, I mean, had there been no ARV supply, we might be talking about millions of orphans. The Global Fund not only provides money to purchase the ARVs and other drugs, it also supports the work of local partners to establish effective distribution networks, ensuring that the drugs reach those who need them most. I was pregnant and I came to the clinic for a checkup. When they suggested I get tested for HIV, I agreed. At the Adama Health Center in Ethiopia, women such as Sarkalam Tilahun 
get counseling, treatment and support. When I tested positive, I was scared. But the people at the clinic showed me how to live. They were very sensitive to me. Circulum's treatment prevented the HIV virus from being transmitted to her unborn child. They told me they could keep my baby from being infected, but I was still scared. When my baby was born healthy, I was so relieved. Circulum and her baby daughter, Marta, like hundreds of thousands of other mothers and children, now share a brighter future, a new picture of health. If you look at me now, I am healthy and I can work. But if you'd seen me three or four years ago, I was sick. If the Global Fund did not support clinics that provided HIV medicines, I would not be here to talk to you. Because of them, I am thanking God. And I say bless you. My parents died during the genocide when I was five years old. Five years. In Rwanda, 21-year-old Delphine Ufitinema faces tragic circumstances few of us could even imagine. My parents were HIV positive, but they hadn't told me, and they hadn't told me I was positive too. I went to live with my aunt. She knew, but she didn't tell me either. When I was older, I went to boarding school and I got sick, so I came to this clinic. When the doctor told me I was HIV positive, it was such a shock. I did not know where I was. Fortunately, Delphine was at the Track Plus Clinic in Kigali. Its services include HIV AIDS support groups for children and adolescents. The people at the clinic brought hope into my heart. They told me even though I am living with HIV, I am not so different from other people and that I can live a healthy life. I am hopeful for the future of my child, but also frightened. In Indonesia, 27-year-old Evi Noviandari, HIV positive and pregnant, worries over the health of her unborn child. My hope is very simple. I want my baby to be healthy and free of disease. Chances are good that Evie's hope will be realized thanks to clinics like this one, funded by the Global Fund. But availability of ARVs and treatments to prevent mother-to-child transmission of HIV are not enough to halt this epidemic. One remaining barrier is the cruel stigma of HIV infection, which has caused many people to be disowned by their own families and shunned by their communities. I got infected in 2003. At the time in Indonesia, there was very limited information about HIV and AIDS. I was discriminated against by society. I felt the stigma, especially from my family. When I moved to this town for a teaching job, I rented a room in a house, but then the people found out I was HIV positive, and they kicked me out. I lived in seven different houses that month. No one would let me stay. I had to sleep in my office. Slowly, after my family got informed, they supported me. This support means everything to me. That's why I want to support others. I decided I must gather others like me who are suffering from the stigma and start an association to let people know the truth about HIV. Now I am the director of the Dawn of Hope Recovery Center and I counsel some of the people who once evicted me. Today they see me as a leader, not just some man with HIV. The stigma of HIV is finally, slowly being eased. I believe that the best thing that has decreased stigma is access to treatment. Because HIV was no longer a death sentence. In the late 90s and early 2000, they were afraid because they knew that that young person will die. And they, they were totally terrorized because they don't know what to do. But now with treatment, counseling, etc., uh, people are more secure and can handle the problem. 
Thanks to the Ethiopian Interfaith Forum for Development, Dialogue and Action, supported by the Global Fund, faith leaders in Ethiopia are speaking with one voice, one message. All of humanity deserves compassion, and it is a sacred duty to erase the stigma of disease, which prevents people from being tested and treated. The stigma and the discrimination is very dangerous, and we are teaching the people not to ignore our people living with HIV. We have to share love and friendship and support them. We have joint meetings with the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and other civil society organizations. Sharing literature and experiences gives us knowledge and we educate our followers, us in our mosques and they in their churches. The Global Fund's new picture of health also includes preventing and treating millions against malaria. Insecticide-treated bed nets, hundreds of millions of them, now block and kill mosquitoes that would otherwise pass the disease to sleeping humans, dramatically reducing deaths from malaria throughout Africa. It has saved a lot of life, really. Pregnant women, children, we have seen the decrease of death dramatically. You know, malaria in Ethiopia is seasonal. Usually starts during the harvesting time. So with improving the malaria prevention and control, this has allowed the farmers to be productive and contribute to the growth of the economy. I mean, if you talk to our economists, they could tell you, you know, how the agriculture economy has been, you know, on the rise in the past five, six years. Nowhere is the new picture of health more compelling than at St. Peter's Specialized Hospital for treating tuberculosis in Addis Ababa. Tuberculosis is one of those diseases that, it's not very sexy, but it affects everybody. And it eats away at a culture and it eats away at a community from the inside. Um, and if you can give people the tools to take care of it, they'll do it themselves and they will, get, they will get better, they will get healthier. For the first time in Ethiopia's history, doctors at St. Peter's are successfully treating patients with the most dangerous form of tuberculosis, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, or MDR-TB. This is uh, an illness that's pretty much, the, probably the best example is, is similar to airborne cancer. Uh, you can catch it just by being in a room and the treatment requires two years of intensive chemotherapy. And to treat our patients here in Ethiopia, you not only need to have skilled physicians and nurses in inpatient settings in which they can be treated, but you need to have a solid outpatient system in which patients can be followed in the outside. Ferns Georges suffered from MDR-TB for two years before Global Fund supported programs made it possible for her to get the treatment she needed. When I was diagnosed as an MDR patient, I was really depressed, and I figured I would die. I never imagined I would get better like this. Tuberculosis is one of the most common causes of death in HIV patients. Because Ferns is also HIV positive, she received priority treatment for both HIV and TB. Though my income is low and my life is not very comfortable, after getting treatment, I am so much happier. I feel healthy and I'm getting better every day. In Rwanda, MDR-TB patient Helene Uenana has a story similar to Fern's. All the while, on my way here, I had no hope I would survive. But once I arrived in this place, the hope comes back. Helene is at the Kabutari District Hospital, which, thanks to the Global Fund, is well-equipped to treat patients with MDR-TB. 
She thinks she knows how she may have contracted the disease. I was a nurse taking care of so many patients with TB, so maybe I caught it from one of them. But I still hope that I can get well and return to work caring for these people once again. Construction engineer Emmanuel Nyaminani, another MDR-TB patient at Kabutari, expresses gratitude for the care he receives. He is now able to work and support his family and community. This place means everything to me. I could never afford this treatment on my own. The doctors here take care of us almost like we are their own children. The Global Fund's new picture of health is multidimensional, supporting programs that provide care beyond any single disease. Nations are starting to recognize that the ability to treat these three diseases creates an opportunity to confront a broad range of public health needs. So you train people and their training help the community to be treated for all types of diseases. And doing so, you increase the health delivery far beyond the three diseases. There are now more than a thousand doctors in Rwanda treating 79,000 patients at 400 clinics across the nation. Clinics that emphasize integrating treatment of the three diseases and beyond. The nurses told me that just because I have HIV, I don't have to die. Judith Mukaparisa and her son Charles are clients at one such clinic. Judith's husband died of TB and may have had HIV as well. Judith and Charles are both HIV positive. They are treating Charles too, and he is okay. The clinic doesn't just treat HIV. They take care of all our health needs. And because my husband has died, the clinic even helps to make sure I have a place to live. I say thanks to all who have helped us. We are getting stronger now. Since the Global Fund, the number of deaths has decreased. Before, a great number of people were dying, but now we can go a whole year without anyone dying of these diseases. The number of patients we can see has increased because we have the material and staff to see them. You know, in the last five years, we managed to construct 15,000 health posts. New local community clinics, supported by the Global Fund, are transforming Africa. Their additional services include maternal and child health care, family planning counseling, and education on good health and hygiene practices. This was not done by the government alone. It was done by the community. They were the ones who constructed the health post. I mean, the government might have provided some cements to support the community, but the actual construction were actually done by the community. Clients of the health post in the town of Ude cannot imagine life without it. Before, we didn't know about things like family planning, child spacing and sanitation. My family is much healthier now, and there is no more malaria in this town. We've learned to avoid harmful traditional practices like pulling our children's baby teeth and female circumcision. I am HIV positive. Before the center began educating about the disease, we were not allowed to take water from the same source as everyone else. Now this is all resolved, and we are living together as one community. If this health post were to stop functioning, literally, we will die. The new picture of health in Indonesia focuses on reaching all members of society, regardless of status. Health officials recognize that the epicenter of the HIV-AIDS epidemic is found among society's outliers, IV drug users, prisoners, and sex workers. Controlling the disease means treating and educating those who might spread it 
whoever they may be. This prison reflects the society because the prisoner will not stay here forever. They will reintegrate with the community. And once they learn about TB and HIV AIDS here, they will share this knowledge with others in their communities. So the prison has very strategic position. I plan to return to my former music career and combine it with the Balinese music I came to appreciate here at the prison. And because of what I've learned here about HIV, I plan to help educate others after I'm released. The Global Fund supports partnerships with local and national organizations to create self-help networks among high-risk groups, such as sex workers and IV drug users. We encourage them to form a groups, and then they form a groups as a big support groups. We support them with uh, knowledge, skill, funding, small funding, with assistance. I get support and training from the foundations, and I am respected in the community of sex workers. So I pass along my knowledge from the training to my peer support group, and they pass it along to others in the community. By emphasizing peer support and communication, vital information gets to people who might otherwise be unreachable through conventional means. The Global Fund encourages governments and communities, civil society and the private sector to join forces and coordinate their efforts. Industry leaders know that a healthier workforce means a healthier economy, and the cost of doing nothing is far too high. Global Fund-supported programs aim to increase productivity and create more robust economies. At the Dawn of Hope AIDS Recovery Center in Adama, Ethiopia, recovered patients build new clinics, make furniture, tend farms, or raise livestock. They earn a personal income and share the profits with the center. The Global Fund's support of such programs is building a legacy of health systems sustained by the communities they serve. Today we are expanding the center and this new facility will also employ HIV patients and generate income by providing non-HIV medical services to the community. We hope this can be a model for our country and other African countries. Individuals, families, communities and entire nations can now picture a healthier, better future. We are talking about the pillars of the community, mothers and children. The children are the future of any nation. The new picture of health includes stronger and more sustainable health systems, changing attitudes, healthier communities, strategic partnerships, rising economies, vast improvements in the health of women and children, proof that our investments in the Global Fund are beginning to reap huge dividends. Improving maternal health. Reducing the stigma of HIV AIDS. Bringing pills and medicine together. Their progress is fragile and depends on our continued support. We're all connected. Our clinic is stronger. Our families are stronger. We are stronger. An investment in one life is an investment in all our lives. We are saving lives, and this is the most important thing you have to look at. Your investment is working. We cannot stop now. With your help, the world is moving ever closer to a new picture of health.